Today we'll be cooking something akin to Kukune United, but what is it? Hello and welcome to Coast Nation Fan TV. I am Pelo, I am your host, and this this is where fans meet and talk about KZ Chiefs. I'm a Kusi Football Club. We are playing once again against Brandon Truta. The team that I think has become our voodoo team and the coach who's our ultimate voodoo. Two weeks back when he played against Super Sport United, in fact, last week Wednesday, what ended up happening is that Super Sport United made sure that they let Chiefs play the ball right and then they engage Chiefs the moment they try to drift into half spaces and cause some problems. Now, looking at Brendan Truta, he's also another coach. I wouldn't call it defensive because he has that side of being offensive in him and in his team. I would call him a well-organized coach. He's those coaches who know how to set up their teams in such a way that they are impenetrable. And that has been kind of a problem for Ikeza Chiefs when we've come against teams that sit deep. Because, yes, we'll say this, this is a very good thing that Ikeza Chiefs are now capable of playing the ball around, keeping the ball but one ingredient that has been missing is that final pass that's going to get to pre and the other thing is for to pre to finish those chances not using to pre as a bad guy here i'm using him as an example because he's one of those players who always gives chiefs 10 out of 10 performances but if in front of goals in the previous games he's not been great yes i know he scored a penalty against sundowns but in the other games, he was missing chances also, not just him. We are going to need to be solid defensively. But that's a story for later on in the video. For now, let's talk about you subscribing to the channel so that you can help me reach more people like you. Now, let's go back to Chiefs and setting up going forward. When we go to our defenders as well, because this is something that might be key more than anything else. Because... Obviously, we're going to have the ball, a lot of it, because now we're brave. We can play the ball from the back, and we're free. We even play out of the presses. I saw King Sundowns were doing that. So if Sekukune tries to do that, they'll be playing right into our hands, because now we know how to play out, even though we're pressed. The issue, though, is how are we going to counter the count attacks? <laughs> because Sekukune are going to get chances, and they are going to create chances. What are we going to do when they do that? Because the key thing here is that as much as we might have the ball a lot of times, but what do we do when we're being countered? One of the great things about that is that when I talked about effort, you have Wood Dover now, who came on against Sundowns in the second half, and we saw a lot of that, that he gives a lot for the team or to the team. He fights a lot. He tries to do everything. He goes forward. He comes back. He's confident on the ball. He jumps when we have to head. So on that part, I know for sure that Dove is going to definitely give us something. Dove will stay at left back. That only makes sense. And when we go to the right back, I think Frostler did enough for him to come back in the game of Sekukune. The only reason I see the coach bringing back Kukuneka is because of the fact that he might be scared or cautious that Sekukune will try to hit us on counters. And because of that, he might want a player who's going to give him some defensive solidity i don't agree with that but it's a possibility center back pairing of ours is not also going to change which brings us to the fifth man of the back five which is dun, 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 do. you guessed it brendan peterson the coach is not going to drop brendan peterson just because he's made mistakes because he said when he was asked about brendan peterson's mistakes he said no this was a flaw from the team. Which brings us to midfield where I think it's going to be interesting because we will keep the ball, we will have the ball a lot and to kind of counter the attacks that they will be countering us with after winning the ball back from us in transitions, you're going to need someone who's going to break up those attacks. And I know Spong Senem Tetua has only been at Kaiser Chiefs for one week. Question is, is he going to play though? I think he should. I think he should. He's been playing for Stellenbosch and he's been performing week in, week out. We saw this with Gonzalez. He came to Chiefs and then he started playing immediately. Castillo, same thing. Came to Chiefs and then he started playing. How much more than for a player who's already been playing in the PSL? Because what that does is that it gives us a natural defensive midfielder who will sit and wait to break those attacks that will be started by Sekukune United. Which means there will be a casualty, of course. And some people might not like this. Because now, we have clearly seen that Kaiser Chiefs, our coaches and staff, prefers Yusuf Matt to play every single game. 
That means in our eight, there will be Castillo and Matt. I know. That might just be a possibility because I know also that the coach likes Matt Lowe, but he also appreciates and loves Matt's work a holicism. He works hard, Matt, every time. So now it's either Matlo will sit on the bench or Mart will sit on the bench. But one of those two players will be casualties of Mteto arriving at Kaiser Chiefs. So I want to hear from you guys. Who do you think should actually be that casualty? Is it Matt or is it Matlo? Let me know down in the comment section. When we go to our forwards, we are going to clash on this one. Give me your starting eleven as I'm giving you the coach is starting 11. This is not my preferred starting 11. This is what the coach is likely to do. When I look at the game that we played against Sundowns, we were looking for pace up front. That's why we had Potsane, Dupree, and Modi. However, we are going to be playing a lot of crosses because the assumption is the Kukune are going to be sitting very deep. As such, we are going to be playing crosses, which means they are going to play a target man. The question is, which one? Because Ranga didn't even feature on the bench against Sundowns, which means the confidence levels are very low on him. But when he did come on against Supersport last week, he actually had a good game. So the coach has that option to choose who is actually going to play better. Because in the box, Ranga did do very well after coming on last week. And I think the coach will still keep Gonzalez because he trusts Gonzalez. I think Gonzalez will still play as a number nine. And Dupree will play on the left. And then on the right, it will be dun 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 Because dropped mode in the last game and brought on Saile. And I think he brought on Saile because Potsan had some injury issues. And sometimes you don't see Modi. I'm not saying he's a bad player because people take things that I say and they exaggerate them. I don't think he thinks Modi is a bad player, but I think Potsan has been out and now he's bringing him back and whenever Potsane plays it does give us something and Potsane and Modi Modi sitting on the bench does not necessarily mean now he sucks he's not gonna play ever it just means him and Saile can always come in second half and change the game and the reason why I think Saile I mean Potsane will start ahead of Modi is because Dupree will be playing on the left cutting into his strong foot the right foot because if you notice our wingers they cut in so if they cut in, they cut in like this and then they can take shots. And then Potsane can cut in like this to his left foot and then take shots. So that is why I think Modi might sit this one out because we need a target man, which he used against Super Sport United. And then against Sundowns, he played a quick front trip because he wanted to hit them on the break. Give me your starting 11. Thank you so much for watching. If you're in Deben, see you tomorrow at the stadium. And until next time, remember, Ikos, Alpelumoy.